I added ChatGPT to every single NPC in GTA Online so I could talk to them and they could talk to me, and here's how I did it. If you're new to the channel, my name is Charles and I teach people how to make mods just like this. And what I'm using for this video is a modification framework called 5M that allows you to create your own private GTA Online servers, and then you can write code to mod them to your heart's content. Before we get started, I want to shout out some of the tools that I used in this video because I did pull in a couple external resources to make my life easier so I wasn't reinventing the wheel. So I used Dolu Tool from Dolu Tattoo. That just made it easier for me to teleport around the map and get where I needed to be. I used PMA Voice from Averian Knight, which makes it much, much easier to deal with 5M's built-in voice chat system. I used WeatherSync from Keybook, which allows me to control the weather and the time of day in the GTA world. I used Soundity from Arenamax, which lets me play MP3s in the world like they were coming from NPCs. And I also used a really fantastic Python script from Delray1 called 5M Mumble Auto Moderation, and we'll talk about that one a little bit later. All right, so let's dive in and start writing some code. And I knew the first thing that I would need to do is to be able to detect if I was looking at an NPC or not. And for that, we use something called ray casting, which is kind of like drawing an imaginary line out from your player's eyes out into the world and seeing what it intersects with. Does it hit a vehicle? Does it hit the ground? Does it ideally hit an NPC? And so that way we know what we're looking at. And so here I'm just writing that ray casting code and I actually borrowed this from OX target because why write it yourself if you can steal it from someone else. And then once the general ray casting code was complete, I wrote a thread that basically continually runs in the background and tracks what we're looking at. And then just for testing purposes, I'm gonna print it out to the console here so we can make sure that it's working. And now if we jump into the game, you can see down in the bottom left console when we're looking at an NPC, it shows us the ID and the coordinates of the NPC that we're looking at. We have a little bit of a problem though in that the NPCs don't really stop to chat with us. They either ignore us and keep walking or they get offended that we approach them and they take off running. Uh, so I'm writing some code here to keep track of the NPC that we're looking at. And then the next thing we're going to do is take away all of their personal autonomy. So now that we can tell when we've started looking at an NPC, we will, the first thing we will do is clear all of their tasks. So that'll stop them from walking or talking on the phone or whatever they're currently doing. And then we'll tell them to spend one second turning to face us, and then we'll freeze them in place. And then for the duration of the time that we're actively looking at them, we'll task them to stand still so they don't try to take off on us. Finally, once we look away from them, or as I'm calling it my code, detargeting from them, we will unfreeze them and then task them to just wander off into the sunset. Back in the game, you can see when we approach this person, they turn around and stare at us, and then once we walk away, they also walk away. You'll see it again here. You do not touch me. It's a little bit glitchy, but it works. We have uh, another slight problem, and that's uh, we can talk to animals too, and I've already taken away the personal autonomy of humans. I don't need PETA after me too. Now this led me down quite a rabbit hole, but it turned out to be quite a productive rabbit hole. So I was able to find a JSON file from Dirty Free, which can I just say, anytime I run into a data conundrum with GTA modding, it seems like Dirty Free always has the solution. Anyways, Dirty Free had a JSON file that had all of the PEDs in GTA in it, and it had some fields that allowed us to tell whether they were a human or not. And it also happened to also tell us if they are male or female, and also gave us some hints towards the type of personality that that specific PED might have. So I wrote a quick Node.js script to basically parse this uh, PEDs file from Dirty Free and extract only the humans and kind of create a more pared down file that was useful for my needs that contained all of the human PEDs along with their genders and their personalities. And after adapting my targeting code to check against that file and make sure that we were targeting humans only, we're no longer violating the rights of this random cow that I found. One more thing on the client side before we get into the really nitty gritty code. I decided that it would be useful for ChatGPT to have access to the current street that we're on. So right here, I'm just adding a new thread that runs every second and updates some variables to keep track of whatever street we're standing on and also if we're near one, what the cross street is. You can see that in action here in the bottom left. I'm on San Andreas Avenue. As I approach this intersection, the Elgin Avenue cross street appears. And then as I turn onto Elgin Avenue, these kind of switch places. So I'm on Elgin with the cross street of San Andreas Avenue. I promised I would talk about Delray's script and now is the time. So Delray wrote this really terrific Python script that actually connects to the game server's voice server and can record everything that players say and then transcribe it into text. 
And the original purpose of the script that he wrote was for moderation purposes. So you could detect if your players were using slurs in game and then log those instances to Discord as well as send a notification to the game server that could automatically ban them. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of getting rid of all the bad word detection because that's not really what matters to us. And all we're going to do is use this to send a transcript of everything every player says back to the server in plain text so that we can send that off to chat GPT. The way these come back into the game server are as a command with a JSON string that contains the identifier of the player who said something and then the transcript of what they said. So right here, I'm just kind of extracting and decoding this and then also grabbing the server ID out of the user identifier, which is gonna be the important part for tying the player to what they actually said. You'll notice in these demos that I speak very deliberately and very clearly, and that's just because of the speech to text system and making sure we're giving it the best possible opportunity to transcribe things correctly, kind of like how you have to be very deliberate when you talk to Siri. Subscribe to Charles Hacks. At the bottom of the screen, you can see our server console, and you can see that we successfully received our transcript as well as my server ID, which is number one. An important part of working with ChatGPT is the system prompt that you provide at the beginning of each conversation that gives ChatGPT all of the context that it needs to have the conversation. And so here I'm just writing my system prompt, which kind of lets it know, hey, you're an NPC in the GTA universe, act like it. You can also see the context that I'm providing with each conversation, like its gender and personality, as well as the time and weather and what the current street and cross street is. And I've written these as kind of placeholders in curly brackets that we will replace on the fly when we start each conversation. What I'm doing here is just extending a bit on the transcription handling that we did earlier to do a little bit more validation. So making sure that the NPC actually exists, making sure it's a human, making sure that the transcript that we received is more than just a couple characters long, and then also setting up a place where we can keep track of these conversations. So when we call the ChatGPT API, which we'll be doing in just a little bit, uh, it doesn't keep track of conversations for you, like if you were using the web version of ChatGPT. So each time we make a request to OpenAI, we have to provide the entire conversation history. So that's something we're responsible for keeping track of locally ourselves. This setup conversation function is run the first time we interact with an NPC, and this is what's going to be responsible for getting that system prompt, gathering all of the stats and information that are necessary to kind of inject into that system prompt, and then replacing those placeholders with the actual data and adding that as kind of the first entry in the conversation. Hey, do you know where the closest bus stop is? And here we can see what that system prompt looks like in practice, so you can see he has a personality of average man, the current time, cloudy weather, and the street that we're on. Things actually start to get interesting now. We have everything we need to start a conversation with ChatGPT. We have our system prompt that is injected at the beginning of the conversation, and then the transcript of the first thing that we said to the NPC. We use a feature that 5M provides called Perform HTTP Request that does pretty much exactly what it sounds like. It allows us to make a call to the OpenAI API, and start this conversation with ChatGPT. We'll receive that reply back from ChatGPT as a JSON string, which we will decode and grab its response out of. Let's see it in action. Hey, do you know where the closest bus stop is? All right, this is really cool. We got a fantastic personable response back, and we can also see it using that context that we provide. So it knows roughly where we're at in the world and can provide suggestions based on that. It's not the most accurate in the world, but it's better than nothing. You can also see that it knows that it's raining out and adds that into the conversation in a very natural way. The next piece of the puzzle is taking ChatGPT's response and turning it into spoken audio that we can play from the NPC in-game. I decided to use Amazon Polly for this because while their voices are limited, they tend to produce the most reliable and conversational sounding audio. This wound up leading me down yet another rabbit hole because I was hoping to use perform HTTP requests like we did for the ChatGPT calls. However, that wasn't really practical with Amazon's APIs, so I wound up having to use JavaScript. Fortunately, in addition to Lua, 5M also supports JavaScript, so I created a separate file specifically for interacting with Polly and used JavaScript to make that call and then return a MP3 URL that we'll be able to use back in our Lua script. All right, I'll put that TTS function to work and we can see how it turns out. Hey, do you know where the closest bus stop is? Awesome, exactly what we were looking for. 
Now, annoyingly, what I found is that while Polly returns the URL immediately, it's not actually available until several seconds later. So the way I got around that was just writing a while loop that waited until we got a 200 HTTP response back and then continued from there. We only have one more piece of the puzzle left and it might actually be the easiest thanks to that SoundD library I mentioned at the beginning of the video. All we need to do to get the NPC to speak this MP3 is pass the MP3 URL to SoundD along with the ID of the NPC that we want it to come from. And without further ado, I introduce GTA GPT. Hey, sir, excuse me. Yes, how can I help you? Do you know where the closest bus stop is? Sure, there's a bus stop just a block down the road on San Andreas Avenue. You should be able to catch a bus from there. But be careful not to slip on the wet pavement as it's raining pretty hard outside. Hey lady, you seen any unlocked cars around here? Excuse me, sir, but I don't think that's a very appropriate question to ask a stranger. I'm just minding my own business and enjoying the sunny weather here on San Andreas Avenue. Maybe you should try looking in a more legitimate way to acquire a vehicle. Hey man, you seen any unlocked cars around here? Nah man. Sorry. I've been busy minding my own business out here on Forum Drive, but if you keep your eyes peeled you might find a ride worth taking. Just be careful not to get caught. Well, there you have it. It may not be perfect, and it may not be totally natural, but I think if nothing else, it's a really exciting glimpse into what the future of gaming might look like, and I hope you learned something along the way with me. If you're interested in making GTA mods like this yourself, be sure to subscribe to my channel because that's all we do around here is teaching people like you how to go from zero to hero as a 5M developer. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you around the channel again.